Greetings YouTube! Back again for another episode. Previously we got this sweet machine running. Did some backwoods riggery on the carburetor and it turned out to work okay. Let's see how she fires up now. It's been sitting for a little while. Nice balance there, Titan. Little choky choky. Some primey primey. On switch. Okay, so we're down to a few chainsaws. Uh, I'm thinking I want to do the red one because I found this guy on the side of the road. <clears throat> surprise, surprise. Oh, there's our little crispy critter, by the way. We'll check it out later and see if it's uh, softened up yet or not. By the way, look at that clean workbench. Man, I can actually put stuff on it. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. Found this nice little setup on the side of the road. This is greasy sweetheart. Okay, let's do a quick overview. Run stop. Serial number. Home light text rod. Got a trigger back here for two-handed use. Trigger up here for running down the street trying to chop someone's head off use. Happy Halloween, by the way. Chain oil reservoir. Fuel reservoir. I'm assuming this is choke up here. Looks like we have possibly idle adjust right there. That's a convenient location. Home light super two automatic oiling. Chain, not bad. A little sticky. Flip it around. <clears throat> Yeah, definitely a well-used machine, but it looks like it's really well taken care of. Missing our spark plug. That's okay. I think I probably have one that'll work. You guys should see how I have the camera set up today. I've got an ammo box with a aux beam light box. You're sitting on top of that with a pen holding the cam, the phone at the right angle. And then there's a <laughs> a tiki torch lamp oil, uh, keeping it all balanced. So. Uh, we're, we're off to a good start. All right, fuel. Uh-oh. I see, holy cow. People say pigs are awesome. You ever hear the noises they make? It's like someone's being murdered. That's my neighbors. Now that the pigs have quieted down, uh, we have some type of fluid in there. I don't know if it's gasoline or... You know, it doesn't smell... It doesn't smell the worst. I don't know if we can stain any boards with that. I mean, it's kind of disappointing, but also not. And let's check the oil reservoir for the chain. Uh, okay, looks like the seal hangs out with the reservoir rather than the lid. And probably can't see in there at all, but there is some oil in there. Okay. We're off to an okay start. Probably just jinxed it. I'm going to give it a quick bath. Looks like we're missing a screw there. You can probably find a replacement. Handle's a little bit loose. Uh, well, it's not loose. It's probably just kind of blown out. Boy, this is one greasy machine. It's, I should probably check and see if it rotates. Oh, that, okay. Well, that's a little bit of a bummer. 
does rotate. It's a bit sticky. I'm going to see if we have a plug so we can at least check spark. All right, found a plug. Not the best of plugs. So we're going to use our spark plug reconditioning stand and see if we can clean it up. And another note, have you seen anyone ever see this before? Check that out. The electrode actually broke away from the, the housing. I was, uh, I don't remember what it was on, but I was trying to start it and I couldn't figure out why my hand was getting blown on. And it, it was the, uh, the compression blowing by the spark plug hit me in the hand. Never seen that before. So I, I held onto it just cause I thought it was cool. Spark plug reconditioning stand has been engaged. Thankfully my vices are not bolted down. Remember I was complaining about wire wheels the other day? Well, I just happened to find one. Watch your ears. Sand our ground strap and our electrode with our Super brand new piece of sandpaper. Custom blowgun. <laughs> oh yeah, I think that'll work. All right, let's do a spark check. Switch is on. Ground strap engaged. Hopefully it stays there. And let's see if I can get a good rip out of the pull cord. I did not see anything. Give me 20 minutes to wrap this up. All right, let's see if I can shock myself, hold down the saw, and pull the rip cord all at the same time. I do not see any spark. First thing we need to do, obviously, is address this, because I can't even check for spark. Socket of the day. Eight millimeters. Millimeters? Eight millimeter. Watch your ears. A screwdriver to remove the handle. All right, handle, bye-bye. Cover, let's see what's back here. I always remove these <laughs> super slow. Because I don't know what's going to explode when I remove what I'm removing. Oh, well that's not bad. It looks like it's serviceable-ish. It might just be too much cord on here. Or it might be the wrong thickness. I think you know what's next. I see a screw right in there. This will either go really well, or it's going to explode. And I'm going to have to figure out how to coil the spring back up. I think you know which way it's probably going to go, but I'm hoping not. It's in there, trying to poke its way out. Oh man. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull this metal piece out. I'm going to allow this to fully retract, and then it won't explode in my face. And by explode, I mean unravel and cause a very, very large frustration. Scissors. Like my purple scissors? Me too, kind of. Except they don't work that well. <laughs> Alright, that's done. This is done. We'll let this unravel. Someone tried to coil that up a lot. You can see right down there, there's a little bend where the spring wraps around this area and engages it. If I can find a way to get that out of there, then we should be in good shape. All right, let's get in there. Hopefully our faithful hemostats will help us out. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got it out. It's still unraveled. <laughs> Whatever. Gonna have to deal with it anyway. Oh, just love this. Okay, so that washer goes on top. I will deal with that later. First, we need a rope that's actually made for this. You can see it doesn't want to come out 
because it's too thick of a rope. So I think I have some ripcord, if I'm lucky, in my little toolbox. So I found some nylon rope, and I found, found an Arnold starter handle. I'm thinking this rope is going to be too thick. I was trying to avoid opening the Arnold, but I think that's what we're going to have to do, because, yep, too large. But that Arnold doesn't look a whole lot more thin. Well, I don't really have a choice. Looks like I opened it once. Changed my mind. Okay, that's separate. Cross your fingers that this is thin enough to fit in the groove. It is. Nice. It's perfect. It's on the verge of being too large, but if I had to guess, they put this by the side of the road because they bought a new ripcord. Uh, yeah, new ripcord for it. It worked on occasion, but uh, probably got sick of it. All right, working on the Arnold. I guess that's all it needs. Take care of a few loose ends. It's not going anywhere. Now, which way do I wrap it? Just kidding. But not really. I definitely had to think about it for a minute. When we're pulling, we want the teeth to engage. So that will do that. Yep. I think we've reached the end of our rope. <laughs> oh man, am I a comedian or what? I'm gonna pull this through, pull that through there, tie it up. We'll call it a day and bring you back. Kidding on that. We need to worry about the spring first. Hmm. And for the fun part. Somebody out there has to know a better method than this. Because your hands turn out like that. <laughs> use a paper towel, moron. Okay, I'll use one next time. So now we got to finagle that hook into there. Make sure I'm doing this right. Yep, not that way. Definitely this way. And I put it in backward. Yep, not that way. Definitely this way. <sighs> Flip and repeat. Round two, fight. Yay! Now for the other annoying part. Trying to get that to engage the spring and get the spring around the end. Maybe we'll get lucky. Most likely not, but maybe we'll get lucky. It's a miracle! And the camera died. Yay! Okay, let's... Uh, pre-tension this thing. No, that's not how that works. That's enough of that. Okay, got it put back together. Got some grease on the front side. Put a little lube on the back side where the spring is. And, like brand new. Now I'm going to tie this onto, I like this style handle. This one, sure, it's more ergonomic, you get more fingers around it, but I like the smaller profile for something like this, you know, with a chainsaw. You don't really want it bumping you in the, in the body at all, so. I'm going to feed this through. You don't need to watch because, you know, I'm exciting. I'm going to feed this through here, into here, tie my knot, tuck it in there, and we'll see if we have spark. And there you have it. 
Spring holds it nice and tight. Nobody likes floppy sad rip cords. Tension baby. All about the tension. All right. So we got the ripcord situation figured out. Uh, let's check for spark. I'm going to do it with a drill because it's easier. So I'm going to get you set up in a place. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, you ready? Let's see what we have or don't have. Hmm. Okay, so it's there, but it's not consistent. Actually, it is there, and it is consistent, but it requires quite a bit of fan. Fan? No. It requires quite a bit of speed to get where we need. I'm going to check the gap between the coil and our flywheel here and see if that has anything to do with it. So I did a quick Google search. It says the gap should be 12 to 13 thousandths, which is very small. Yeah, I just looked it up again. 0012 to 0013. That's like paper thin. This is the thinnest one I have. Oh no, there's more hiding behind it. It's so thin. 0025. Okay, let's break these loose. Gotta love that crack when you break a nut loose or a bolt loose. Maybe. Oh yeah, there it is. Just gonna put it in between there, if I can. Okay, let it smash into the magnet, which it is. We're gonna tighten it up. Okay, it's tight. Wow, that is a tight tolerance, and I'm okay with it because it's not rubbing. All right, place your bets. Think it made a difference? I don't. Interesting. It did make a difference. Not only did it require less drill speed to spark, now the spark is hotter when it's at a higher speed. Sweet. Well, workbench used to be clean, but when you're in the middle of a project, you keep on going. All right, that's it for my day. I'll be back tomorrow. See you in about three, two, one. Hey folks, welcome back. So I think what I want to do next is just slide the entire assembly right out of the case. Because there is lots of goo that's been going on in here for a long time. I have no idea what size that is, but that is definitely not the right one. Really? That's pretty hardcore. Turn it up to 11. Okay, well, sometimes you just gotta Turn up the pump. All right. Nope, no pop on that one. Also, a little locking, uh, I don't know what you call that. It's not a lock washer, but it's a lock washer. Let's see who wants to come out and play. Disconnect the coil, shut off. Probably hanging up on, oh, well. Spark plug may be a problem. Looks like we're gonna have to pop the muffler off, which is okay, because I wanted to pop it off in the first place. See if it's all carboned up. Oh, cool. Oh man, that's oily. Look at all the oil on there. Not that it's a huge deal, but still, it's a lot of oil. Yep, there she is. And honestly, that exhaust port looks super clean. 
mean, that piston looks great. It looks really great. Only one ring for this little guy, huh? How cute is that? Welcome back, folks. It is another day. Did some tearing down yesterday and found out that this was full of black goo. I'm guessing all the gas evaporated and left behind the oil. Got some oil left in here still. I don't see any leaks. I don't think this is leaking. I think the case is dirty because, well, it's a chainsaw. I think it's going to be a poor choice to assume that the carburetor is okay. Uh, it could have a crispy diaphragm. The mixture screws and jets and everything could be all gummed up. If the gas tank was that bad, the carb's probably that bad. So, a big sigh. Let's remove the carburetor. There we go. Let's get our throttle linkage out of there. Ooh, those are some serious bolts. There we go. It's uh, stuck. It's really stuck. Am I missing something here? No, it's moving. There we go. Interesting. That is stiff, so that's supposed to be like that. Our gasket came off nicely. Low speed mixture adjust right here, but it looks like the high speed is not adjustable. You can also see our cute little crankshaft in there. Looks nice. Needle bearings look nice. From what I can see, anyway. Sterile work environment and lower camera level engaged. Let's check out our diaphragm. Also, this is a Walboro 21-146. I think Walboro has a pretty good reputation, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that may not be that bad. That baby was stuck on there. Feels kind of sticky. So this is interesting. I think the pin here that our little rocker rotates on is integrated into this cover. So let's take these screws off. And I bet that whole assembly comes right up. The next question is, how do we get it out of there? Well, I apologize. I didn't catch it, but I took the screwdriver, put it in there, reefed on it, and it went pop, and that was it. It's coming right out. Nice and easy. And it does look like it's just one assembly, which is, again... Something I haven't seen before. Although I haven't seen a whole lot. <laughs> Still learning a lot of stuff here. This is pretty cool. Based on the way that uh, that needle slid back inside of its hole, it's going to be a bit gooey. So, spring, stay where you are, please. Needle, come with me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up the needle. I'd mentioned Musty1 to you guys before, something else he does, which is why I keep a little jar of Q-tips, is he'll take a Q-tip, put it down where the seat is, and give it a few spins. Just use a little bit of brake clean, and that should take care of it. Now that we've cleaned up our needle and seat, let's have a look at our low speed mixture screw here. And 
And there we have it. Not too bad looking, but we'll rub it on some paper towel. Had some dirt coming off of it. Gelled up fuel. Got my bristle here. Do some poking around in there. Make sure our passage is clear and I can see the needle coming right through there. So I'm pretty sure we're just fine. I can also see it going through that other hole. So no issues there. Let's check out the back side here. Okay. Looks all right. The flaps are nice and soft. Very soft. That's good. I bet all the uh, oil in the two-stroke that's been sitting in here saved it, or helped preserve it anyway. I don't really know what's under here. I'm not going to take it apart. As far as I know, it just flows through the fuel down into there. It must be a way of distributing it throughout the crankcase, and this probably, maybe this deflects it right at the crankshaft, who knows. But, uh, yep, I think uh, I'm going to just give it a wipe down. Throw some brake clean through a couple passages and put it back together. I almost forgot. I wanted to show you. you got an engraved number 31 on there. Isn't that cool? Whoever was putting it together, apparently that was their mark. I don't know. Just kind of silly things like that. It's almost like a piece of history, even though it's from a chainsaw that's probably built in the 80s. I'll have to look up the serial number and, and figure out when it was built, but... Uh, this is moving a lot nicer, the needle's all clean. Let's uh, keep on going. Got the carburetor back on here. I cleaned up this little air box, if that's what you want to call it. And it occurred to me that this is definitely not supposed to be on the outside of that. This should have been like this, holding the thing in, holding the element in its place. So whoever installed it last made a little oopsie. Is that a super efficient way to hold that in there? Nope, especially since it's made of like tin. So I'll play with this for a little bit, get it on there, clean some stuff up and we'll keep on going. And you ever see a brush like this? It's like pr plastic bristles. It's soft yet still stiff enough to get things cleaned up and get the dirt out of creases and crevices. It's pretty handy. And I've had it for a long time, so it's not like it wears out super fast. I'm not trying to get this immaculate, but, you know, I think she deserves a little bit of a spit shine. Well, while we're here, might as well check the oil pump. I believe you should just be able to spin this, and it should start pumping oil. But I'm not 100% certain with this saw, so I'd like to see what we have behind the scenes here. Got a little snap ring. Washer. Sprocket. Yeah, oh, wow. That is definitely not what drives the oil pump because there is nothing there. That is our clutch. Engine speed increases, these weights fly out, grab onto this, start spinning your chain. So if I had to guess, the oil pump is driven by the engine itself, or it's possible it uses some other type of pulse signal. I also just realized when I was testing Spark the other day, that I was spinning the engine the wrong way. Yep. All right, let's see if we can do this. If it works, we should start seeing oil pump out of here. 
if I can get it on the right spot. Yep, it's pumping oil. Let's find a shadow. Let's see if I can zap myself. Looks great. Proceeding on. All right, got her cleaned up as best I can, or as, as best as I want to. T took the case, gave it a spit shine. No more grease and goo in there. Look how much this is rubbed through. Not rubbed through, but this must be magnesium. I'm assuming this is a magnesium case, but you can see where the engine rubs on it. Interesting. Oh, it's not the engine rubbing on it. It's the oil tank and the fuel tank. Nice. Okay. So now, let's put it back together. So riding the struggle bus. That was unpleasant. Okay, we are ready for this cover that I forgot to put on. Oh, am I going to have to pull it out again? Nope. Just mutilate it until it goes where you want it to. Spark plug inserted, ready to go. I freaked out for a minute. I found these two screws and I'm like, uh, where do they go? And then I realized I haven't put the, the handle on yet. Well, before we go any further, what do you say we give it a try? 50 to 1. Using steel oil. Hope I don't offend the home light. Okay, choke on, a little bit of pedal, switch on, oh baby, we'll keep choke. I was going to say, come on, Ripcord, work with me here. All right, I'm excited. You guys should have seen the smoke show exiting my garage after I opened the door. It uh, obviously has some oil to burn off. That piston was soaked when I was looking at it, but um, that's okay. So next, let's get that bar and chain on there and the handle and do some wood cutting. So what I'd like to do now, just clean up the bar, clean up the chain a little bit, maybe check a tooth or two. Oh, they feel pretty sharp actually. You got your leading edge there, Whoop. and it grabs my skin pretty good. So hopefully we won't have to do any sharpening, which I've gotten decent at over the years. I'm not a pro, and I'm probably not going to show you how to sharpen because I know someone's going to rip me a new one about how I'm doing it, and how I'm doing it wrong. So we'll leave that for another day. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that little hole is for grease. A lot of the saw blades, or the saw bars, these days have automatic oiling of this through the chain. So the ch as the chain goes around, essentially it oils your bearing up front. But being as this is older, you're supposed to pump grease into there. I don't have a little needle adapter, so I am going to try to just 
mash that on there. Okay, so check it out. <clears throat> I just pushed more in there and it came out that. So that's good. Let's flip it over and do the same. See if I can duplicate my luck. I remember my dad as a kid had a little handheld grease gun for his steel. And he would pump red grease into the tip of his bar. There we go. Sweet. Okay. First of all, get the chain on. On top, your little tooth will be like an arrow pointing the direction you want it to rotate. Get some oil. Got a big old jug of steel oil. Bar and chain oil, rather. Stuff's like honey. Just for a little bit of pre-lube, since we've dried everything off. All right. Get your chain on there. Can't really see, but the chain engages a cog at the rear. Bit cumbersome. Then our plate goes on. A little arrow indicating the front. Then we have a washer. And then a nut. pretty good okay let's go find a log it's a bit windy today so I apologize if there's wind noise also I am NOT a chainsaw professional nor is this an instructional video <laughs> the last thing I need is someone telling me how big of a moron I am because I don't know how to handle a saw so otherwise if you want to hang out, sit back and relax, let's cut some wood. Cold start.
Well, that was a pleasant surprise. What a nice little machine. It cut really well, actually. The chain is wet, so it's getting oiled nicely. Uh, notice that it seems to be running a little rich. You could maybe hear when I was cutting through one of the larger logs, it would kind of bog and then come back, bog and come back. Um, but I can't adjust the high the uh, high speed mixture because there's no adjustment. The only adjustment that I have is this little low speed screw here. Actually, just kidding. That's idle. That's idle. That's the mixture. So I don't know, maybe tickling the mixture for the low will help the high. Most likely not, but either way, I mean, if I'm just tootling around with this and, you know, chopping up some small wood, this will be a great little saw. So I might just hold on to it for a while. Also, one thing I noticed, um, this nut started to, to loosen up a little bit. Could have caused a very sketchy situation. So that's something I'll have to keep an eye on if, when I'm using it. Maybe I just didn't have it seated totally because I just put it back together. Needed a little run time to kind of seat itself. But um, yeah, overall, I'm happy. Hopefully you guys are happy. Thanks for hanging out with me and doing some more fun stuff. We'll see you again on the next one. I almost forgot. Got to check on our crispy critter. This thing's been an ATF for like a week. If it's not softened up, I'm going to be pretty surprised. Survey says... Crispy. Okay. On to the next fluid. Thanks again for watching, folks.